It's not every day I get a brand new camera to play around with, so I thought it warranted making its own video. Inside of this box is a very nice, high quality camera from 2010. I got this for an incredible deal because it's new old stock that was being sold off. And despite it being close to, well, five years old now, it takes full HD video, 10 megapixel pictures, and a whole slew of other features. That probably gave it away what exactly is in this box. It is a Sony Cybershot TX7 digital camera with full 1080p AVC HD video recording capabilities. I actually have the box flipped over just because the other side has the shipping label on it. I've got my tr trusty metal scissors here to open this box up with. Let's try opening this up without cutting myself. I've been in the market for a decent stills camera that can actually take decent HD video preferably with autofocus and stereo audio and I was previously using my Fujifilm Z9 or Z90 I believe which does take 720p video but it's in the AVI format it's quite low quality and really isn't all that good in fact I used it for my Toshiba Canvio Basics hard drive unboxing and while it was an upgrade from standard def it still wasn't as, uh, as high quality as I would have liked. So the seller decided to throw in uh, the Sony carrying case. I'm not sure if this was thrown in or it actually shipped with this. And here is the camera itself. So here's a better look at it. We have a full HD 1080, 1080i actually I believe. Uh, this records in AVC HD so you get those MTS files which don't really agree with Max and iMovie. An Exmor R CMOS sensor, uh, Zeiss Optics Intelligent Sweep Panorama, 10.2 megapixels of 25 millimeter wide angle lens, a 3.5 inch extra fine LCD, and full HD movie. And it takes these really small BN1 batteries, they're quite slim. So you should get a battery charger, the battery pack, AV cable, USB cable, something called a paint pen, a wrist strap, and some software. So without further ado, let's open this up. And here it is. We get our manual here. This is, uh, let's see. So here's the manual. We have a replacement plan. I guess this was purchased from Best Buy because it has a, a Geek Squad uh, black tie protection replacement plan. That's interesting. Uh, we have an LCD protector, which is interesting. I think this was a uh, this was not uh, a freebie that was included with this. You had to buy this separately, so that's quite nice. I'll definitely be putting that on. Get a limited warranty card, which I'm sure has long since expired. What's this that's one of those multi-language pamphlets. Let's see what it says. Uh, some more access an accessories guide for ridiculously overpriced Sony accessories. We have the software, I believe a driver as well as, yeah, it comes with the handbook, registration, and picture motion browser for Windows. There's no Mac software. Let's go ahead and open this up now. Take a look at the camera itself. This does include a compact charger, thankfully. You don't have to charge this via USB. And here is the camera itself. Again, this is new old stock. It's really incredible. You can take a look at it. Here is the camera itself. Extremely slim and in great condition. This thing... I, I, I'm going to hazard a guess that this thing got very little use when uh, whoever, whomever originally purchased this camera. Let's see if there's anything else in this box before we put it to the side. Oh yes. We have the USB cable. I have no clue what this would be for. And the AV cable, which interestingly is the same that's used on the high and digital light handy cams. So here is the camera, the charger, and here is the carrying case. I thought I was going to have to take one of the lanyards that is attached to one of my older cameras and use it with this one. But fortunately I opened this up and what is sitting in there but your wrist strap. So I will be attaching that very shortly. And I just noticed as well, the seller also included a 4 gigabyte Memory Stick Pro Duo card, which was quite generous of him. Most times when you buy these things on eBay, 
practically you're lucky to actually get the item you paid for people you know take the batteries the chargers and they all sell them separately so let's take a better look at this camera now so here is that really large three and a half inch LCD screen that is a touch screen that's why there aren't any buttons on the sides here up here on the top of the unit uh, we have the on and off switch as well as your control for taking a photograph you have a mode selector to switch between video and photo modes as well as a playback button here and your zoom control is actually this neat little switch that's integrated onto the very edge of the camera. It actually works quite well in my testing. You have your wrist strap uh, connector here. On the bottom you have your tripod mount as well as a uh, proprietary Sony docking connector if you want to use this with a dock which I believe supplies USB, AV jacks and a few other things that uh, you could attach to this by way of a dock. Here's where the battery is stored. You actually just push this little switch to the open position and it opens up. Here's a look at the battery again. Once again, this is the NP-BN1. Very, very small battery. And this camera, interestingly, has not only a Memory Stick Pro Duo card slot, but it can also support SD cards. So, these Memory Stick Pro Duo cards tend to be a bit more expensive than their equivalent SD cards, so you could buy an SD card and use it with this camera. That's a very nice feature. They're interchangeable. For now, I'll just use the Memory Stick Pro Duo card since it's empty and shouldn't have anything stored on it, providing I can get it to go back in the camera. And we will get this back in here. And again, you need to close the latch, otherwise it'll keep popping open. Very slim. I'm really impressed with how how ergonomic this camera is. Uh, just has a very nice feel to it. Much better than my Fujifilm. Much sturdier. And there's that nice brushed metal finish on it. This is again part of the Cybershot lineup of cameras. Let's turn this on. The classic Sony Cybershot power on sound. You do have optical steady shot, no digital image stabilization to mess up your photos and videos. Left and right stereo microphones for video, your flash, uh, red eye reduction lamp, and your lens there. We zoom in. Yep, we can just barely see the lens moving. So here it is powered on now. I'll try to get this in the frame. We have a couple different things here that we could go about doing. Battery is actually a bit dead. I don't believe there's anything on here from the previous owner. There shouldn't be. Oh, it's been cleared. Let's go into the menu, see what's going on in there. Uh, we have something called Easy Mode. You adjust your white balance, your metering mode, face detection, and your display settings. Let's see what's in here. You can change your movie format recording mode as well, which is a very nice feature uh, because this does have the ability to record 1080i. We can also record MP, uh, MPEG-4 videos, which are a lot easier to edit, especially on Macs. Okay, now see, it's going to walk us through. That's one thing I like about this camera is when you first get it, it walks through through uh, what to do. And it says you should touch. I think you just have to touch the screen. There we go. Yep. We'll focus on this point. So... I could go ahead and take this camera, I'll zoom in, focus on that, it automatically senses the mode of operation, and I could just take the picture now, and it took the picture. Okay, take two, apparently this JVC HD camcorder decided it was going to corrupt the video file, so here it goes again. It's about two hours later, this battery was well and truly dead, so now it's completely charged. And we've got a bunch of settings here. Uh, very nice, I get 813 pictures, this is with the 4GB Memory Stick Pro Duo slot. 10 megapixel stills with 4x3 aspect ratio, you can also take it uh, in 16x9 mode. And if you click this green camera, there's different modes you can switch between. You have your Program Auto, iSuite Panorama, your AVC HD Movie Mode. Anti-motion blur, handheld twilight, backlight correction, HDR, and scene selection. Really, really uh, well equipped when it comes to different shooting modes. And if we go over here, we have a, uh, if I click that again, we have uh, interval recording for burst mode, uh, high, mid, and low speed modes uh, for if you want to take a bunch of photos all at once. Timer, if I click that here, 
uh, 10 second, 2 second, uh, self portrait one person, not quite sure what those do. Uh, your flash control here, you have off and auto, that's about it. Now if I press this it'll jump me into the movie mode and I believe it'll start recording as soon as I do that. So I'm not going to do that right now. I am going to go into the menu and take a look at the settings in here. Uh, we have easy mode, uh, which I'll leave off, I'm perfectly fine with what this is. Uh, smile shutter, I don't really use that. Uh, it detects your smile, so this does have uh, smile detection, which I will shut off now. Let's get back into the menu. I do need to get used to using this touch screen. Uh, there's your image size. You have 5 megapixel 4x3, VGA 4x3, and then 7 megapixel 16x9. So that's quite nice. Uh, you can adjust your macro mode, your exposure, uh, compensation, scene recognition. So if Intelligent Auto isn't working, you can change that to a manual scene adjustment. Okay, movie format. This is where it gets interesting. You can change this from AVC HD recording to MPEG-4. Your autofocus illuminator is this little indicator there. I believe it illuminates red when you're attempting to autofocus. And the white balance on this camera is not wanting to cooperate. There we go. Have to manually override it. Uh, grid line. I always am a fan of that. I'll probably turn that on. But that's about it. It's really not that difficult, and if I want to take the photograph now, I simply need to, and if I zoom this camera out, I'll just take a picture of that case. I just hold the button down, and it'll focus instantly, and take really good photographs. I'm really impressed with how well this thing performs taking photos, and when I want to take a video, I simply press the video button, and it starts the recording instantly. This is in 60 frames per second, so it's extremely smooth right now. That's it.